Welcome to Cashflow Diary, a podcast where we discuss business, money, real estate, and the sharing economy. As a full-time real estate investor, entrepreneur, and all-around problem solver, I have had the privilege of developing individuals into powerful business owners. And today, the focus turns towards you. Our mission is to help you build your real estate empire by leveraging strategies to grow yourself, your mind, and your wallet. Let's get started. She loved, uh, her name actually is Kara. No. Oh, <laughs> she loved well, everything about nice. the home. Nice. Uh, she loved everything about the home, said it felt like a home. Yes. Uh, the all, she In her review, uh, she said the only thing she would say negative was the location slash neighborhood. She felt unsafe at times. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that annoys me uh, because it's a good neighborhood with good people who've lived there for a long time. And so I'm going to respond to this review. Um, I see that look, Jay. I see I, that look. I'm, I'm listening now. I'm encouraged. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, I just want to say simply, we're surprised to hear that you felt this way because we never received any um, concerns from you. Our team never received any concerns or uh, issues from you during our stay. I just want to say, look, it is a multicultural and diverse neighborhood, but it this is a good neighborhood filled with good people. Sure. Um, and you could read our reviews to see how everybody else has felt about it. We've never had any incidents here. Yes. Okay. Um, so is Christine there? No, Christine is actually um, out right now. <laughs> I, I'm in New York, actually. Christine is out in California. Got it. Got it. Is there a reason she can't respond to this? Is there a reason Christine can't respond? Only because she's out for the day because we're setting up the new units. Oh, that, that, totally fine. It doesn't have to be responded to today. Okay. So, but we should respond, right? <laughs> yes. And part of the... Here's part of what I'm saying. Part of what I'm saying is for myself, and it sounds like you're very similar. Um I've had to give myself time to emotionally separate so that I don't respond with the way that I want to jab at people because that's what happens. That's me. Um, I can be very petty to say the least. Therefore, um, I will at first what I would do is uh, I always started with the following phrase. Thank you for taking the time to send us your input <laughs> because that always helped me calm down. That just always did. Thank you for taking the time to ask your question. That was uh, now when I need more time than that, when that's not enough, then I will set a reminder to come back to it. 24 hours, if 24 hours wasn't enough. It'll be the two weeks or whatever that time frame is in order to still make sure I respond because I was too emotionally connected to the situation and was just irritated because ultimately what I want to get to is a point where I can just state what happened and not editorialize about what happened. Words like surprised and shocked and dis you know what I'm saying? Those, those are the yeah. words that can sometimes add a color and a flavor that <laughs> the other person who's reading it can assign a meaning to that. I may or may not want because I may mean remember always remember this uh, this the same seven words and understand depending on how you feel that day this is how you hear them or read them I didn't say you were pretty I didn't say you were pretty I didn't say you were pretty do, do you hear you hear how each time I did that and I can I can do that a lot of times, but do you hear how each time I did that? I am saying something else. Yeah, uh, th th there's more than just those seven words. That's what you want to avoid. <laughs> OK, because what we can't control is how the person behind because it's the person that that's going to come back and see that we don't know how they're going to read it. Because they weren't there. They, were, they have no emotional connection to the, the guest or to us, but they can see how we respond. And that 
is what they're judging us on. Not just do we respond, but what is that response like? Right. Mm-hmm. So if you, you want to get to the point where you can just state what happened. Right. Um, I guess what I'm unsure of how to do in responding to her public review. Yeah, right? totally understood. Can- so what you now what you're saying is that she has an issue about location. Yes. How long did they stay? Uh, her stay was a week. Got it. Not a week. No problem. Um, and you're saying that during the stay, there was no communication about anything that was disappointing. Correct. Got it. So, um, Karen, thank you for taking the time to give us your input. Standard Airbnb policy gives all guests 24 hours uh, to respond to anything or points of dissatisfaction from the time you arrive. I checked the records and we did not receive any issues uh, or notification of any issues or complaints. In the future, please let us know. Um, so that we, in the future, on your next day, when you come back, please let us know um, within the first 24 hours of your arrival, anything that you're dissatisfied with, and we will happily resolve the issue as we have for our other guests. So mm-hmm. I'm a little, I'm, 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 <clears throat> I'm a little bit hesitant to write that because how does that look to another potential guest who wants to book and sees this review that she felt unsafe in the neighborhood and then sees our response that in the future, let us know when something happens. If that was me reading it, I would assume, oh, what happened? Correct. That's exactly what you want. Because you know what they're going to do? What? They'll look at the other reviews. Okay. And what are they going to see? Not that. No, they're not going to see anything. But- Correct. So, and, and we're adult enough to know that you can't please everybody. And some people are just ridiculous. You just don't want to also be in the group of ridiculous. Agreed. I, I'm trying to come from a perspective of she's no longer my audience. My next person who is going to stay there is my audience. And how do I communicate a message to them that this you is don't. a good message? You don't. Well, and that's what I'm trying to get you away from, because it's a relative term. What good is in the eye of the beholder? Pretty is in the eye of the beholder. Safe is in the eye of the beholder. And it's all relative. There are neighborhoods that you feel safe in that I do not and vice versa. So that that's what I'm trying. I, I try to stay away from those types of words in our messaging in our uh, listings, in our communications back and forth, because safe is open to interpretation. What's safe, right? And that's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to get on the bandwagon of trying to defend good neighborhood because there's too, it's too easy to poke holes at good because what's good to you is not good to the next person, is not good to the next person. And I know that, you know, websites like city data, crime stats, all this other stuff can make almost any zip code look like a war zone when you don't know what you're comparing it to. So I I just want you to not even make that a more, a a bigger issue. I just want, what I want you to do is to drive, make sure that you're talking, you're addressing, you're not ignoring, but you're then saying it in such a way that other people can read it and go, well, let me see what else other people say. Not, oh my God, they responded horribly to her. I never want to stay here because they, you know what I'm saying? You don't want that. You don't want to sound defensive ever. That's not going to go well. Does it also sound offensive to say? No, defensive, not offensive. Defensive. Okay. Does it also sound defensive to say... Uh, this is a multicultural and diverse neighborhood. Yes. It does. Okay. 100%. It's almost, I can almost hear your finger snapping in your neck doing this. Number. I can almost hear it when you say it. 
And that's okay. what you don't want. Fair enough. That, that, that's what you want to stay away from. You really want to stay away. I know how you feel. I am with you. I'm with you. Um, and the last time I was responding to these is when we got a four star review for not having a recycle bin. I decided I was done. I can't do it. I'm just y'all here team. Y'all have to respond to these because okay. no recycle bin. Okay, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, all right. I will. I. That's why I said 24 okay. hours. Now you see why I said 24 hours, and then 24 hours yeah. is enough. I need Christine's more time. Response was worse, by the way. I know you want Christine to respond, but her response was worse. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Okay. Then, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, she yes. Texted, she texted me what her response would be. And, <laughs> then you understand. That's why I said give yourself. You got to give yourself that break, then yep. give yourself and if that break's not enough, because you've got to get to the point where the emotion can go away. You're not trying to prove a point, not trying to point out you're wrong. You should have said something. Why don't you communicate better? That's probably why you're, you know, because you, you, you're about five seconds away from just crossing all the lines. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. I, I appreciate the exercise. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I've just yeah. been there. <laughs> I've just been there. Anybody else right now? Got it. Anybody else? John, how did you like that one? Yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> I want to type stuff all the time. I had this lady. Well, uh, I just, I just want to, a bug landed on her head and she called us to, to let us know that, what, you know, it, well, it was her tone, actually. A bug landed. Was, oh, hold on. You, you said have. a bug landed on her head. A bug landed on her head. Was she outside? No, she was inside. Okay, go ahead. And her tone, it was, it was like the way I read it anyway. It was like, don't you have pest control? <laughs> <laughs> and that. I said, yeah, we do, basically. And her response was, well, you know, it was something about her. She's got an infant, and it's her only child. And sometimes ah. they're first time you know, mom. they saw a bug and they got it. You now it's a problem because she has an infant. First time mom. Yes, yeah. the child is treated like glass. I understand. Um, I'm sorry, and hopefully she got over it. But who knows? Um, but yes, absolutely. That that is definitely a part of this business of dealing with individuals uh what do you call them idiosyncrasies and whatnot so uh, i hear you and and it's just a part of what we have to do i uh will talk to you guys soon y'all be good make good choices <laughs> and follow the system so that it works for you instead of you having to work for it and uh we will talk to you soon Thank you for tuning in to the Cashflow Diary Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave a rating and a review. If you'd like to keep the conversation going, head over to CashflowDiary.com to sign up for our email list, as well as check out all the links and resources in the show notes. Thank you again. Until next time.